Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So we have a brand new release of Apollo Save Tool. And in today's episode, we're going to walk through and I'm going to show you demos of each and every feature. Let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. So in case you didn't know, Apollo Save Tool is basically an application that lets you manage save game files for the PlayStation 4. Now, he has support for a number of other platforms, such as the PlayStation 3, as well as the Vita, and even the PSP. So there's a number of different platforms that this tool works on. But obviously, we're very interested in the PlayStation 4. So heading over to the GitHub, we can see that it says, this homebrew app allows you to download, unlock, patch, and re-sign game files directly on your PlayStation 4. Now, if we go up to the releases right here, and we scroll down just a little bit, we can see that in this release, there was several things that was added. One of them being a number of different network tools. So a URL where you can download HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, as well as FTPS. And then it has access to a simple local web server. So it says right here that you get full access to a console's drive. And this is what that would look like. And so what's really nice about this is, is that if I wanted to maybe download one of these files, well, I could just come in here, save link as, and then select my drive. And there is the file name. And if I press save here, well, it would let me download that directly to that drive, as well as you could do things such as navigate into some of the different folders here. So here is my update directory, and you can obviously do a few other things with this. Looking back over at the releases, there's also the ability to disable the web browser history, as well as there is a hex editor that is there for simple hex editing for save data files. There's an on-screen keyboard, and then you can activate offline accounts with user-defined account IDs, as well again as there is an improved internal web server. And it does say that there is online DB support, as well as user-defined online DB URL, and then improved DLC rebuild and then an explicit firmware check when importing encrypted saves. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I will download this PKG and let's switch over to the PlayStation 4 to see it in action. Okay, so once you have it installed, it is going to show as version 01.40 and now we can go ahead and load that up. So I'm just gonna kind of go through the list of what was included in the GitHub, and the very first one is all about the network tools. So we're gonna go into user tools here, and then we're going to scroll down to network tools. And from right here, this is where we can toggle a local web server. So if we go ahead and we press X on this one, we can see that right now we have a web server that is listening on this port. Now, what we could do with this is we can obviously head back over to the browser and we could navigate through the PlayStation 4 just like I showed you before. Now, keep in mind, you will need to keep this screen currently up and running in order for that web server to continue listening. If you do press OK right here, just like it says, that server has then been stopped. The next thing you could do is come right over here to toggle web browser history, and we'll press X here, and it says disable browser history. So if you go ahead and you select yes on this one, it does say right here that the browser history has been disabled. So we'll go ahead and we'll press okay on that. And I'm going to go ahead and bring back up my browser. And well, the last couple of sites that I went to, they are no longer in here, which is very nice. Sometimes, for example, what I find is, is that maybe I left a site that I used to jailbreak my PlayStation 4 open, and maybe I've already jailbroken, and I come back in and it tries to reload that page regardless if I'm already jailbroken or not. And we can obviously toggle that back on again by going to toggle web browser history and then just turning 
that back on. Now, also there is this URL link downloader. So if we go into this and let's just say we went ahead and we typed in a URL that contains maybe an image or a PKG or something like that. Now, again, this is the full screen keyboard that was also mentioned inside of the GitHub. If we go ahead and we press done right here, then it says that it has been downloaded to our data folder. So we can go ahead and come back over into PS4 Explorer and we come into our data folder here. Right there is the s.png, which was obviously one of my thumbnails from my last video. And by the way, you should check it out because there is an awesome new release of Gold In Out and it is amazing. Next up, there is a hex editor for save game files. So if we go back and we go to our hard disk drive saves, I'm going to just pick one of my saves here, which is going to be Death Stranding. And I can scroll down and there is this brand new option right here that says hex edit save game files. And so if we select it with an X and then we select the checkpoint data, and now once we press OK here, it automatically brings us over to this screen. Now, obviously, you can't do things such as search through it right now, but it's really just a good kind of quick glimpse if there's something maybe you want to check. And so another feature is you can activate offline accounts a bit more easily. So if we come right over here to the user tool and we go to activate PS4 accounts, if you had another account that did not have a PSN ID attached to it, so for example, all of these of mine already has a PSN attached to it, then you could come in and create another user that has basically all zeros, and then you could press X on it and you could change that to whatever PSN ID that you would like. So it makes it a lot easier versus using the XML files that I talked about and discussed in a previous video. And then the last one was, was that if you come right over here into the settings here and you go down to where it says change online database URL and you press X, you can specify your own online database. Now, where you'll see this kick in is obviously right over here when you select the online database. Now, another quick word on this. So I am over here on GitHub and this is the existing URL that it was pointing to. And in particular, what it is looking for is this PS4 folder right here and then it comes down and it looks for this games.txt which maps the title id to whatever the name of the game was so if you are looking to host your own you would at least need to follow this format that is in this repository right here now there was a tweet that the author created and he said if you have two ps4s you can transfer saves on the network using this method on ps1 select saves bulk management enable web server on ps2 go to settings change online db url and then enter the ip address and the port number from the playstation 4 number one and you can check the online DB on PS4 number two, and you should be able to browse and download your saves. Now I did write back and said that I tried this and it says that there is no save games found. I am waiting to hear back from the author on this, but the reason that I found out that you really needed to mirror this existing repo was because when I turned on the debug settings, I found that when it did a search for my PlayStation 4, it was looking for this slash PS4 slash games.txt. And if you look at the file structure of the PS4, obviously there was not a PS4 folder that was in here on the system that would allow it to show that there is a games.txt. So there may be a future video coming out when this is working because ideally it would be amazing to be able to have one PlayStation 4 in 
one room and have another PlayStation 4 in another room and be able to pull down those save game files from either PlayStation 4 in order maybe to resume a game. I think that is exactly one of the things that I have been looking for, and hopefully we will get that. And so that is pretty much going to do it for this one. Again, Apollo's save tool just keeps getting better time after time again. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like the video and please subscribe to my channel. I would absolutely love to have you come back and visit me again. Okay, with that being said, I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out!